10 skincare tips I wish I knew sooner as a board certified dermatologist. I'm Dr. Azadeh Shirazi and I'm here to give you educational unsponsored content because you guys are more than a pretty face, meaning that you are educated, you are informed to make the best decisions when it comes to products and treatments. So if that sounds good, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and let's get into it. Number one, daily sunscreen protection. And don't roll your eyes. I know you guys are like, yes, yes, sunscreen. But honestly, UV radiation is the number one factor that can age your skin exponentially. I mean, the people that I see coming into my office that have been so good about sun protection, the quality of their skin, their pore size, their firmness is just so much better than people that have skipped the daily SPF on a regular basis. And I know you guys, I know I see you guys coming into my office and you're like, you know, I didn't want to wear it. I don't wear it all the time because I'm not outside. I work indoors. Well, guess what? You got in the car, you drove here, and you are sitting here with no sunscreen on, which means that you accumulated some UV damage on the way to my office. Just take a look at this picture. Look at this driver. One side was protected by the inside of the car. The other side faced the window and had the UV, particularly UVA rays. They are the aging rays. And guess what? They penetrate deeper into the skin than UVB, which are shorter. Those are the burning rays. Because I'm not concerned about you getting sunburned on a daily basis. I'm more concerned about skin aging when it comes to wearing daily SPF protection. You can see the difference in a skin over your 25 years of driving with that side facing the window. And I noticed it on myself. Back when I wasn't wearing sunscreen on a daily basis, I would only wear it if I was gonna be outside, but I regret that and I wish I would have worn it just commuting to and from work because I feel like my left side sags more than my right side and I honestly think it's from driving. So get yourself a broad spectrum SPF 30 or higher and put it on before you leave your bathroom, rain or shine, doesn't matter if you're going to be on the couch the whole day inside your house, put it on because you may go outside, you probably have windows and just visible light that's on us from screens, from computers, they can also cause some aging. Number two, don't forget the neck and chest. We are so good about our faces. We wear hats, we wear sunscreen here, we put all our products on our faces, but then we neglect the neck and chest. We don't even think about it. I mean, I forget about it. But the neck and chest skin is actually thinner and much more fragile. It's more likely to get damaged from the sun and just where it's located, it's more likely to get sun exposure. So ladies, if you're just going for a jog, Invest in some high neck, high shirt uh, tops because the best way to protect the skin is to actually cover it. You can't cover your face, but you can certainly cover the neck and chest. And make sure you put sunscreen there. But you know what? Even with sunscreen, you still get UV rays. So I find that if you don't have to look cute, you know, just just wear the you know wear the high neck shirts. If you're out playing tennis, if you're running, whatever outdoor activity you may be doing, don't wear those low cut shirts because that chest skin is just gonna get damaged a lot more than facial skin and guess what when it comes to treatments in the office lasers I can't be as aggressive on the neck and chest as I can on the face so we're not able to reverse that aging as easily and with as much power as we can the face so even the more reason to protect it also when you do your skincare routine whatever you're putting on your face take it down the neck the chest, I even say your earlobes, back of the hands. You can put whatever you're putting on your face, just take it down a notch. Now, you have to be careful because like I said, the neck and chest skin is thinner. So if you're using powerful actives like Retin-A or exfoliating acids, they can cause more irritation when they go on the neck and chest because it's just more delicate skin, it's thinner skin. So be real cautious, don't use as much of those powerful actives as you do on the face. Number three, forget the million step skincare routine. I don't know how many people come in and they've got the products lined up. I mean, they're using 10 products in the morning, 12 products at night. I'm just like, I know they mean well. My patients, honestly, they mean well. They just wanna get as many ingredients onto their skin 
as they can because obviously the more great things you put on, the better your skin quality. Wrong in this case. Well, first of all, after like the third or fourth product, nothing's getting in. At this point, it's all just getting wasted. It's getting sit on the surface of the skin. And second of all, your skin is a real life organ. It's gonna get irritated, it's gonna develop memory to these inactive products that are in all these skincare products, and over time, it can, it's gonna become sensitized, meaning that it's gonna remember these million ingredients that you're exposing it to, and at some point, it will start to react because the skin is very immunogenic, it's very reactive. The more you throw at it, the more it starts to remember things, and then later on down the line, it's gonna say, oh, I really don't like this ingredient, this particular preservative, I'm gonna start developing rashes to it. So you don't want that. What you want is a very comprehensive skincare routine, meaning you're gonna use products that have multiple ingredients in one product. For example, I can only talk about my own brand, but Aluma C, for example, has vitamin C, it has hyaluronic acid, it has ferulic acid, it's got vitamin E. You don't need a separate hyaluronic acid serum because it already has that in it. So some of these ingredients like niacinamide is another one. You don't need a standalone product with just niacinamide in it. Niacinamide can be put in to other products try to look for things with multiple actives that work well together so that you can keep your skincare routine to like three or four steps in the morning, maybe three or four steps at night, but no more, okay? Keep it simple. Number four, start healthy lifestyles. The younger you are, the better that you're gonna be able to adapt these lifelong. It's like they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So the younger you start, with exercising on a regular basis. And there's really good data that actually exercise, increasing your muscle mass, is very beneficial for the skin. Because when you work out, your muscles release this cytokine, or this myokine, I should say. It's called IL-15, and that has been shown to have anti-aging effects. Maybe they'll even develop it as an anti-aging injection down the line to make people, uh, you know, for look younger and reverse aging. So exercising, don't smoke, don't even start. If you are smoking and you're young or you're vaping, stop because it's really terrible for your collagen. Get enough sleep. Sleep is so important. Good sleep hygiene. If you can, sleep on your back. I'm a stomach sleeper and I really wish that I started sleeping on my back way, way long ago. So just try to make healthy decisions. Don't drink too much alcohol. Don't consume a lot of sugar because your body gets used to however way you treat it, right? So I, for example, have worked out my entire life. And so it's just become a way of life for me. I've never really indulged in sugar, processed sugar, not like fruits and, you know, honey and things like that. But try to, you know, limit that sugar intake. These are all things that damage your collagen long term. So it's the accumulation of these things over many, many years. And then all of a sudden you'll wake up and you'll be like, oh, you know, all these changes in the skin from those lifestyle habits. Number five, be gentle with your skin. I see all these people, they're like washing their face, you know, trying to get that lymphatic drainage going, using all sorts of tools, rubbing it all over their face. Well, let me tell you, friction and rubbing can worsen acne. If you're prone to red blotches, broken capillaries, it can cause those red blotches to become worse. It can get your skin to form broken capillaries. And just, you know, that, that pulling and stretching of the skin can damage your skin cells, and especially like around the eyelids. You know, I see people removing their eye makeup and they're just, you know, just harshly just like wiping it, you know, off. And it's just, hey, take it easy, relax. It's gentle, we wanna be gentle with the skin. Remember, it's an organ and it has feelings, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be too aggressive with it. I'm not a huge fan of like the scrubs. I feel like the particles can over time, you know, cause a little bit of damage to the skin. So removing your makeup, you know, just be really gentle with the skin. Exfoliate, but make sure you're doing it right. A lot of people think 
oh, exfoliation is so good for my skin. I want to exfoliate every day. And then they end up in my office. They've completely blown off their skin barrier, completely disrupted it, thrown their microbiome all over the place. So you want to exfoliate, but you don't need to exfoliate with a strong active every single day, especially if you're using things like Retin-A already that's doing some cellular renewal for you. As you get older, I mean, unless you have acne, you really need to exfoliate maybe once twice a week you, you don't need to you don't need to exfoliate all the time so be cautious of how often you are you know trying to remove those dead skin layers exfoliation is wonderful for the skin particularly i find chemical exfoliation much better than physical physical exfoliation you get results quickly right away right after you to use your scrub but chemical exfoliation can take a little bit longer to show results but the benefit is glycolic acid those chemical exfoliants actually send signals down to your dermis to rev up collagen production you're doing more than just removing dead skin cells and brightening your skin you're also boosting collagen now if you have acne you know some people can get by with using salicylic acid twice a day every day and it also depends on the formulation of your exfoliant i personally use clarify pads and i use them twice a week or i'll use an exfoliating cleanser like three times a week but that's about as much exfoliation as my 46 year old skin needs. Number seven, it's never too early or never too late to start on retinoids. Why? Because they are the most scientifically studied ingredient and have shown to boost collagen and hyaluronic acid more than any other ingredient out there. I don't care what anybody says, but retinoids, Thicken your dermis. Some people are going to tell you, oh, they thin out your skin. I don't know where. What are people talking about? They do not thin the skin. They do the opposite. We have skin sample studies that show they actually thicken your collagen bundles and they rev up your collagen production, thickening your dermis. So if you want the highest quality skin that you can possibly get, at home, start on a retinoid. And you can start with like an over-the-counter retinol. I personally use Lift and Renew because it's been shown to have the same benefits and efficacy as low-dose prescription Retin-A, but it's not as irritating. I personally have sensitive skin, so sometimes my skin has a hard time with prescription Retin-A, so I love the Lift and Renew. But even products like Rox, Retinol, uh, Avene has a retinol aldehyde, which is all, which is one step behind prescription Retin-A, and that's a great product. There's also fancier retinols, um, aside from Lift and Renew. There's Alpha Ret by Skin Better Science. So, you know, whatever your budget or you know your skin tolerance is, start with a retinol. You can start every other night. Check out my video on retinol staging. If you do struggle with using retinoids, because I have a special technique that I teach my patients that I personally practice so that I get the most benefits from my retinoid and the least amount of side effects. Number eight, don't solely rely on makeup wipes to get your makeup off. And I know I've been there and I'll do it sometimes. I'll put the makeup wipes right next to my bed. It's a late night, get home, you're tired. The last thing you wanna do is splash water on your face and cleanse it with a regular cleanser. I've been there, done that. But avoid using makeup wipes on a regular basis as your makeup removal technique. Because first of all, they don't do a good job of removing the makeup second of all that residue that you leave that you leave on the skin again those are actives that potentially down the line your skin can start to become sensitized and can start to react I see a lot of rashes from chronic makeup wipe user people because you know you're not you're not really rinsing it off you're just wiping it off and that's it you can use the makeup wipes but make sure you also cleanse with a cleanser after and you get the residue of the makeup wipe off and because they're not good cleansers you don't want that makeup and sunscreen and debris to start getting compacted into your pores stretching out your pores damaging your skin remember that clean skin is healthy skin so make sure you're doing a good job removing your makeup every night before you go to bed. I know, there are exceptions. Number nine, moisturize everywhere. Not only your face and your eyes, but your lips, your 
fingertips, your cuticles, your chest, decollete, moisturize your legs, your elbows, your knees, your heels. Just get in the habit of moisturizing your skin. Your skin will look so much better when it's well hydrated and moisturizers help strengthen your skin barrier. And if you can get a moisturizer with actives like retinoids or vitamin C, even better. Uh, you can also use products that are designed for rough, bumpy skin with a moisturizer, like things like urea or salicylic acid. They can help with razor bumps. They can help with texture. But moisturizing is so important for the skin. I tell people to do it right after the shower when your skin is damp. That's the best time to seal in hydration and strengthen that skin barrier. And number 10, eat the rainbow. Make sure you're getting your greens in because having a healthy diet full of antioxidants, essential vitamins and nutrients is so important for the skin. And I find that I kind of learned this a little bit too late. I wish I would have started this when I was, you know, in my 20s or 30s, but I actually didn't start eating as healthy as when I got in my 40s. But Really, you want to make sure you're getting your nutrients from real food, real vegetables, real fruits, and not just popping supplements. I mean, we have become so dependent on supplements and just, you know, capsules of vitamins, but it's so much better to get the real thing if you can. You know, force yourself to try to get three to five servings in every day. If, if you have to make a smoothie, if you have to juice it, whatever it might be, but make sure you eat the rainbow, you eat a high variety of foods that are rich in antioxidants and nutrients. It's so important for the skin. I have an entire podcast episode on skin and nutrition so you can check it out all right guys thanks for tuning in remember you are more than just a pretty face you are informed you are educated to make the best decisions for your skin's health because remember healthy skin is the best skin you're going to get and we want to focus on more than just being beautiful and pretty we want to be healthy and we want to shoot for longevity thanks guys for tuning in if you found this video helpful share this with a friend because sharing is caring until next time bye guys